Ramzi is the co-founder, along with Jumana El Jabri, of Visualizing Impact, www. How many W's did I say? <laughs> anyway, triple W is uh, Visualizing Impact, uh, org, an uh, interdisciplinary organization that specializes in data visualization and journalism, uh, creating visual stories on social justice. Visualizing Palestine, a project of Visualizing Impact, has been featured in Huffington Post, that's uh, the fast company, also in Al Jazeera, among other publications. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ramzi Jaber. Um, Ahmed spent 18 days in jail. He's now under house arrest for the next year. Every year since 2001, more than 500 Palestinian children just like Ahmed have been detained by the Israeli military. Most were taken from their beds late at night. And next year, there will be another 500 stories just like Ahmed. These injustices do not go undocumented. Stories like Ahmed's are recorded and compiled into reports by human rights organizations annually. But do you ever read them? Visualizing Palestine transforms these complex reports into engaging visuals giving you the context simply and effectively so you can share Ahmed's story with other people who care about social justice. We are an independent team of creatives, researchers, and techies dedicated to equality. Our stories are being used by journalists, academics, and activists. They've been published by major media outlets and even posted on subway billboards. Today, our stories are already being seen by millions of people around the world. But if the whole world is paying attention to stories like Ahmed's, then we'll have taken a vital step towards achieving equality for all Palestinians. That is why we're launching this campaign. We've made progress, but there are many more injustices the world needs to know about, and we want you to join us in telling them. And next year, we want to reach over 5 million new viewers with new animations, 20 new infographics, and exhibits in five different countries. Child imprisonment is just one of the issues we want to draw attention to. Don't miss out. Join us in the movement for equality and dignity. Thank you. So we launched a campaign uh, exactly a month ago. It ended at 10 a.m. this morning. And we actually, uh, not, we asked for 60,000. Over 400 people came in and chipped in. We, we overshot our thing and we raised $70,000 as of this morning. So, uh, but, uh, so, uh, so it's a good day today, actually. Um, let me explain what we do. I'm gonna start off with a, with a story. Um, uh, has, how many of you he have you heard of administrative detention? Three, that's good, or four. Uh, so administrative detention means that you're in jail without you, nor your family, nor your lawyer knows why. And you're there for, for a while, at least six months at a time. Uh, and this is, ha this is being used by a lot of Palestinian prisoners. Over equivalent to 40% of the male population has been in jail since 1967. One person uh, last year said, you know what, I had enough. Why should I be in jail right now? So he actually went on a hunger strike. This person went on a hunger strike and uh, spent a long time on a hunger strike. Uh, a few group of people launched a campaign called the Dying to Live campaign. It was online and offline. Uh, these people, uh, actually Lena is a friend of mine, she actually spent three days without food just to, just to feel what does it mean to go on a hunger strike. Um, I told her she was really crazy, by the way. But uh, uh, These people actually uh, managed to get some attention. The very first media attention for Khadr was 52 days into his hunger strike. Imagine being almost two months without food and the very first media attention coming in. 52 days, it was Jazeera. Then it was 59 days, Reuters. You can see thousands of people. Then it was 62 days on New York Times. On the same day, CNN gave a brilliant kind of conversation. Uh, and then on the 66th day, 
he was, he was declared to be set free. See how you see the small group of people actually used you know, offline and online to actually come and, and set, set this person free. So where do we have to do this? Um, we actually, uh, we create visual stories for social justice. So in the case of Khadr Adnan, we took down 21 medical reports and visualized the physiological effects of total voluntary fast. What happens to your body when you go on a hunger strike? And I know a lot now about the medical <laughs> effects of it. So for example, day 14, something called catabolysis. Catabolysis is when your body breaks down muscle instead of uh, fat uh, for, for, sustenance, for survival. This went viral on, 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 among Palestinian, among online kind of Twitter feed. One person was like, for those who don't even know what it means to go on a hunger strike, this is it. We also featured, by the way, uh, other people went on hunger strike. If you can see, there's like uh, Gandhi or uh, Leila Swaif who also went on for, for 22 days on a hunger strike. Uh, from then on, we started to, to visualize other things. So we used CGI, this is computer generated images, to visualize over 25,000 homes being demolished. Why, why are they demolishing homes? They're demolishing homes because they use it as a way of pushing people away. Jerusalem is the city I was born in, and, that's, and I, I'm no longer allowed there. And they use most of the demo, a lot of the demolitions happen there to just push people away. So we visualized it because, you know, 25,000 homes is just a number. Uh, we visualize the water appropriation, how they steal water. As you say, Ramallah has more rainfall than London. How many people have been in London? Knows how, you know, uh, how you know, rainy it is and how dry it is. So, uh, and it will show that actually the, the Israelis take uh, 300 liters as opposed to the Palestinians get 70. We did another take on this, which never released, is only for your eyes only. Uh, this is, we showed how uh, they're taking the water between, uh, beneath our feet. This concept came to me when my grandmother would order a tank of water because we we're done. And then I learned about how this actually water that she orders is actually from uh, an Israeli water company called Mekarot that has taken the water beneath our feet and sells it back to us. And so we came up with this visual. This, you know, and we tried to visualize the effects of checkpoints. There's 500 checkpoints in the West Bank approximately. And 60, between the span of five years, between 2000 and 2005, 67 women, mothers, gave birth at a checkpoint. 36 babies died. I was shocked that I didn't know this when, I, when we started doing this. But you know what the UN did? The UNRWA, instead of actually, it's not UNRWA, the UN, uh, instead of actually removing the checkpoints, they started training Palestinian midwifery, how to give birth at home. This is a visual that I like to say because, you know, most people think, you know, I'm Palestinian and think, you know, that to show, actually, there's, there's not much Palestine left. If you see the white areas, is only what's left in Palestine, or at least in the West Bank in terms of area A and area B, which I'll explain why. So, why, 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 how did this come to happen? Um, I'm, I'm an engineer. I think maybe, maybe the only engineer here presenting at a design conference, I'm not sure. Um, but I, I, and I, I used to work in Dubai and I, and I studied abroad and I went back to Ramallah to organize TEDx Ramallah, which it took a year and a half of my life to organize a TED event. P.S. This conference is awesomely organized. This is Yani Anjad Nukat. And quality speaker is brilliant. So just to let you know, as a, as a fellow organizer, I spent a year and a half. I spent a year and a half looking for people to put on, on stage for, for people who actually, you know, working on issues to advance. Who's, who's, why are we in this mess and who's doing something about it? You know, in, in Palestine, why are we in this mess? And you know what I found? I found a lot of data, a lot of statistics. Uh, here you can see this is a snapshot from the, uh, how many children have been incarcerated. You saw this at the beginning of the animation. This Ahmed, uh, he was being taken from his home and put in jail. You know when he was begging the soldiers? He's begging the soldiers, come take me tomorrow, because tomorrow I have an exam. I don't want to fail it. They actually took him and they, he spent 18 days in jail and then, and then he was under, held under house arrest for um, a year. This, is, this, is, this happens 500 times a year, every single year, consistently. They use it as actually, they use it as a terror of constraint. Um, 
And this, this data is actually by very reputable people, Amnesty, World Bank, Oxfam, the UN, all these data is, is, organized, you know, is, is collected by them. You know, it, it, it's so much data that actually, you know, we say that Palestine is one of the most documented injustices on earth. It's really so much data, so much evidence. So we, one of our first attempts at visualizing this is the children one, because that's the one that really catal you know, catalyzed me to do something. Uh, it's a very rough one, as you can see. So we just visualize the uh, Palestinian uh, children who've been killed. One shocking thing that happened, as well as in Palestine and the West Bank, is forbidden roads. Roads that I cannot be on, especially if I'm going from Jerusalem to Bethlehem, where I'm, you know, go. Uh, and it's, we're not allowed on because of the color of who I am, because I'm Palestinian. So Beth Salem, an Israeli human rights organization, actually documents this. And, and the, the last update they made was February 2013, which is a few months ago. We took this report and created this map, which went viral. It had over half a million views. Uh, it's been featured in a lot of places. You can see the red lines. These are, these are lines that roads cannot, uh, that I cannot go on because of my ethnicity. Um, I just met uh, someone who's in computer science and, uh, in the audience, and, and this is one thing. We took, we wanted to show the effects of settlements. So we went to the bus, the, the Israeli bus map, bus.co.il, as you can see here. And we kind of hacked, it's not really a hack because it's public data, but we scraped all the information from that bus map and showed the routes, uh, we showed all the routes from Jerusalem to the west, to the settlements, to show that the settlements are actually a, a dominant part of the, of the equation. And there is no such thing as Palestine. So in, in this, oops, and this, is, and this is what it looks like. You can see here of Jerusalem, and you can see, we, uh, our information architect, his name is Ahmad, he, um, ha he wanted to show this as a bus map. He wanted to show this as a guide for the Israelis who want to go to the settlements. This is how you get to the, your you know, settlements. But then we, we had to juxtapose it. Here, this is, oh, sorry. So this is, you can see as a guide. Here, you know, this is for anybody who wants to go to the settlement. This is how you do it. And the lines and everything. Uh, we had another task. We wanted to show that 800,000 trees have been uprooted, olive trees. You know, olive trees uh, for Palestine is actually a very strong symbolic um, symbol, and, and we use it a lot. So we, how do we show this? How do we, so I wanted to sh sh walk you through the process of, of, uh, of trying to be creative. You know, 800,000 trees, it's just a number. Who cares? You know? So we thought, okay, maybe we can do it economically. How many farmers have been affected? GDP per capita. Uh, we, we, or we can do it, you know, forget humans, you know, persons, you know, sometimes um, don't matter.